These five things will help improve your Windows experience drastically. I'm pulling things from other operating systems that I miss. I use Mac and Linux a lot, and there's certain things when I'm in Windows, I'm like, oh, I wish it had this. So I do, I add it. Let's start with hotkeys and Windows hotkeys. First off, like Windows key and E, you can see right here, pulls up Explorer. This is a default hotkey, which is fantastic. Everyone should use that. Uh, there's also Windows key and let's say three, it'll launch the third icon on your start bar. This is both for Windows 10, Windows 11, all of that. Pretty powerful, but that's about where the Windows hotkey stops. And with Mac and Linux, you can really expand these out to be like Windows Q to quit an application. That's very powerful. It's a heck of a lot better than trying to do Alt F4 and then reaching over your monitor. That, that stinks. It's a terrible, terrible hotkey but one so many people use. But also I wanna launch like Windows Terminal, I can just press Windows X to launch Terminal or Windows Q to quit. Or let's say I wanna launch Brave, I could just go Windows B and then it would supposedly launch Brave, but I actually put this in the wrong one. So if I look at my script, we can actually fix this. This is a auto hotkey script that adds this extra functionality that's already in Mac and Linux, and we're just adding it to Windows. Now there's some very powerful things in this hotkey. If we take a peek, we have launch terminal with this command, launch brave with this command. I actually updated this command, but I didn't relaunch my script. So we'll just go ahead, hit reload script, and then Windows B. And then it launches Brave. So there's Brave. We'll quit Brave out with a Windows Q. And then the Windows Q, you can see it gets the title, posts a message, and then quits out. So this is how you'd quit out with this hotkey. I'll go ahead and leave a link down below so you can take this and expand on it. Path of Exile, a lot of times I like to click or move. Same with like Diablo 3. Instead of using left click to move my character, I use auto hotkey mouse wheel bindings where I just scroll up or scroll back. That helps, especially if you're older and you have bad wrists or maybe some carpal tunnel for working in IT for 20 years. Yeah, yeah, that's a good good little hotkey to just kind of take the ease off certain aspects. While we're on the subject of Windows Terminal, let's go ahead and launch into it. This is extremely powerful. Back in Windows 10 era, you had to come into here, you'd launch PowerShell, and it would be like this old archaic PowerShell 5, which is bad. But with Windows Terminal, you can see it's so much nicer, so much uh, clearer. You got an acrylic effect, and you can even launch into command line. You can even go into certain instances, like a Vizur Cloud Shell, or I could launch right into a Linux instance and launch into any Linux program that I wanted directly from here. Launch such as, let's say I wanted to do like a G edit, I could actually launch into that and it would launch my G edit program, which is pretty darn powerful. I can launch graphics and they're all accelerated. So I can even edit videos using my Linux programs in Windows. It's just a very, very powerful thing. Windows terminals come a long ways since it originally launched. And if you do any CLI work, I think Windows Terminal is a must and a massive improvement to Windows. Next up, we have the Start menu. Just come into your Start menu, hit All Apps on Windows 10 or Windows 11, and just kind of flip through here. Is there anything in here that you don't use? And we have a couple things like Snip and Sketch, I'm not a big fan of. I use Share X instead, so if you like your screenshots, I'll leave a link to that video. Share X is an amazing open source tool that's free as well. Highly recommend it. So I would flip through here, just see if there's anything that you want to remove. But after going through the all apps and uninstalling anything that you see there, you can also look at appwiz.cpl. Appwiz.cpl is the old school control panel and you can easily kind of flip through, look to see if there's anything in here that you don't notice that you can get rid of. And out of everything here, everything looks pretty darn good to me. I don't think there's anything that I would necessarily remove. But if there is, you would go through, remove it out of the traditional programs and features. You'd also do this through the new settings menu and you just go through apps, apps and features, and you can kind of flip through and see if there's anything in here that you might want to remove. Like here's people. I would uninstall that, but I don't think they'll let me. <laughs> uh, I could rip this out through PowerShell, but I've gotten to the point where 
uninstalling apps that weren't meant to be uninstalled can sometimes cause instability, so I don't necessarily recommend that much anymore. Next up for Windows 10 improvements, I still recommend hardened tools. I showed this an entire video. Uh, you don't necessarily, the too long didn't watch that video. Just come in here, download hardened tools, give it a run, and then I would just harden up your system. Make sure you harden all these. I've already hardened my system, but if I didn't, I would probably rerun this. Just blocking script host, office macros, and ActiveX, Adobe Reader, vulnerabilities, auto run, and just some other well exploited things that is used in Windows. So this helps at least make it a little more secure uh, than stock settings. Next up is just this script right here. I would highly recommend just coming in here, copying this. This is from our website, ChrisTitus.com. I'm just going to right click, run as admin and we just paste this in. This launches my little script that does a lot of cool things. You can install programs from this. If there's something that you need on here, you just click it to install that one program. Essentials tweaks. Anytime you do a big feature update, you probably wanna go through and install that. Now what that essential tweaks does, if we look over on a terminal, it disables telemetry, which is a good hog of a lot of system resources. It runs Ono shut up and it runs it with the recommended settings. So this actually blocks and secures and makes you a little more private while also taking out activity tracking, location tracking, maps updates, feedback, tailored experience. There's all this extra just garbage that bloats up many Windows instances, and it just goes through and disables a lot of these, just the regular sensible things. And that's one really nice tool that I run on every system. I just come in here, hit essential tweaks, and then go about my day. And then also I always like to click security updates. What that does is it just makes sure I'm only getting security updates, not the default settings, which gives you basically makes you a guinea pig for Microsoft and they'll push a lot of junk updates to you where the security updates only downloads exploits that have been patched. So vulnerabilities and security updates are very small. So it'll fix a lot of your Windows update problems. Now, one thing I would leave you with and something that is not necessarily just as kind of a bonus here at the end is a custom ISO. A lot of times Windows just has a bunch of extra garbage in it that you don't necessarily need out of the box. So if you find yourself installing Windows a lot, I highly recommend coming in, make it a custom ISO. You can do NT Lite, you can do MSMG Toolkit. There's a lot of different methods that make this much easier for everyday users. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section and I'll see you in the next one.